Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to see an earthquake, get a lesson on solar energy incumbent on the Earth, and find NASA scrambling to explain away the fall of Neptune. As always, we're going to start with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was a mostly quiet day. We did get a mild M-class solar flare. Two filaments erupted on the incoming limb. Nothing significant coming in Earth's direction, however. Geomagnetic activity is expected to be fairly low for the coming days, with the lone exception being if we do get a second instance of the southern coronal hole stream. If it wasn't disconnected from the northern reach, that would be a sure thing, but that stream may sail south of the Earth based on its position. While we watch the sunspots the second half of the week, we will also be eyeing the solar wind. On to seismicity, where a significant shake occurred in Papua New Guinea. They take big ones there all the time and are largely prepared for them. Shaking was felt across the local islands. Now we're going to get a little lesson on solar irradiance. This is where we've been stuck for decades. A look in the UV at specific wavelengths. There's only a 0.1% change over the solar cycle, which is how they say the sun doesn't impact climate. But those down spikes, what are those? Those are big solar flares. But wait, shouldn't those go up? Yeah, that's the problem. Biggest flares in the last sunspot cycle were in early September 2017, and here's what that looked like. A significant drop. It's the single greatest flaw in solar forcing of climate change. The specific wavelength they pick makes solar flares in the large blasts show up as drops in solar energy. Now, not only does this mean that their models miss the actual energy delivery during those events, but any actual effects of those flares end up getting blamed on human pollution. That is a double failure. But now, they're looking at the entire spectrum of solar irradiance, and oh my, are they finding the story is much different than before. Not only does the data go up in flares now, but the smallest push is by 20 to 30 percent, forget 0.1 percent, but some wavelengths have 10 to 100 to even a thousand x increase in values. That is very different than a drop in forcing shown in other models, different than leaving actual effects to be blamed on us. This is how you begin to fix climate science. So go ahead, YouTube, put that little UN banner on my video. Tell everyone this is the truth. And so is this, folks. The collective has badgered NASA so badly they are back to the Neptunian equatorial aurora and are trying to explain it away as no big deal. It's a valiant effort, but falls short. Folks, taken with the freeze out of the upper atmosphere and the storm reversals, this is the nail in the coffin of the blue planet's magnetic shift. This is what it looks like during an excursion, and boy, the outer planets are taking the pounding in a big way. Folks, come out to the ranch for one of the special days we've got on deck, pole shift conferences, prepping days, and for that tactical training at the start of August, if you'd like to try sparring with me, come on out. ObserverRanch.com. And don't forget about the Colorado Prepper Expo in October, just a skip away from the ranch. Details on everything can be found at ObserverRanch.com, and we would love to see you. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone